connectivity, it could be for your network LAN issue, right? So it can now uh, for anything, right? So uh, first one by one, you have to check. As I said earlier, the, you have to check first network, uh, 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 layer one, I have to check the layer two, one by one, you have to check, right? So there's the way. Okay. Okay. Is, is there any other question? Dear Patterson, if you have more questions, you can uh, note down in a uh, question answer box. We will answer you uh, at the end of the session. I think you can continue. Observe. Okay, sir. So uh, the, uh, for the network connectivity uh, troubleshooting, uh, we used uh, lots of tools for uh, you know, performing the um, problem. I mean, the troubleshooting or mitigate the issues for understanding what the problem is. Uh, so. Uh, we can uh, use the R tools, we can use the ping tools, stress route, route, telnet, all, the, all those actually uh, to see lies for, uh, I mean, for analyzing the problem, where the problem or out is uh, will be. So, uh, in our uh, at, at this situation, uh, uh, so, uh, in our like uh, address solution protocol that connects an internet protocol to fix the physical machine address also um, uh, also we know there's a mac address is i uh, am am i audible so can you hear me but um, make noise but something problem okay Okay. Okay, now clear. Okay. okay. Uh, actually, my hard phone disconnected there. So, so ARP, uh, as we know, the ARP is a distribution protocol that we used for uh, uh, fixing the IP address to the MAC address, right? So, uh, when uh, we are troubleshooting, like uh, the IP, uh, he's getting his IP address, but uh, not uh, able to ping the gateway of the host right then we have to check in host level uh, by showing the ARP command or um, we can use in windows or linux or whatever it is like uh, is it uh, uh, i mean uh, is it uh, mapping his ip with the mac address or not so uh, ARP is um, another tool um, yeah, if it's a tool another tool is ping it's a uh, uh, we know all the tool is used to take reachable to destination host by sending an ICMP message, right? Uh, ICMP means internal uh, internet control message protocol, right? Uh, so it uh, actually uh, forward the packet to the destination and providing the route around trip time of the packet, right? Uh, so where uh, actually we'll get uh, all the where the packet is traversing, if it is coming back into our host, then uh, we think the problem is not related to the uh, network or other side. Right? So if we don't uh, found any uh, feedback from our host, then how uh, uh, next tools we used for the trace or the problem, where the problem is. So the path is like, uh, this is one host. Uh, So like uh, yeah. Let's say you are in, uh, this is two PC, right? Or, okay, let's remove this. Let's say this one is one router, this one is another, this one is another, and this one is another. So all are connected to each other. So you are, uh, say this is R1, this is R2, this is R3, and this is R4. And you are trying to check the reachability of R4, that is 4.4.4.4. .4 .4 .4. And you are trying to check the uh, comment whether the R4 
IP that is 4.4.4 is issuable or not, then query um, what tool you will use, right? Uh, so you first you will check with the ping command whether you are getting the ping response from your uh, phone network or not. So if you are not getting the ping response from the phone, then uh, what tool used for the problem is how actually uh, check the problem. Then you will use like a trace out command, right? Trace out command. When you will uh, use the disk out command and for uh, the 4.4.4 IP, then uh, it will traverse one by one, one by one half, right? Then if you uh, then if you found the uh, trace out command is not working under um, after the R3, then you have to uh, I mean uh, then you have to understand the problem is it, um, with your R3. That means your packet is going to R3. That's not related to the R1. That is not related to the R2. But it is related to the uh, to the R3. Then you have to check uh, what is the configuration problem in R3, or uh, what what uh, is it related to the physical connectivity, or it is related to the configuration level uh, problem. So this is uh, another tool for checking the path uh, for any destination where we are not getting ping response or uh, not the physical. Uh, I mean the layer three response, and also there. Uh, could be a problem with the route. Uh, so if you found you are not getting any ping response or test out from R1, like uh, the, so you are not going or passing to the R2, then you have to check whether it is related to the uh, route. For going towards the R4, you have to have mm, no route EM for R4 in your R1 uh, network, um, uh, in R1 routing table, right? So no either it, it could be a static route, it could be a dynamic route, right? But you have to have the route for the uh, four network in your R1. So R uh, route is another uh, uh, tool for checking whether the problem is related to the route or other things. Another tool we use normally uh, for configuration management that is the telnet, but uh, like uh, you are uh, all are working fine, but uh, when you are trying to configure for R4, that is a remote side, then how actually you will configure the R4? So you I have to connect uh, through Telnet or SH, right? So it can be anyone for uh, remote management or configure the device. So this tool normally used for the network troubleshooting and management purpose. So you, uh, every day we actually use those things for troubleshooting, uh, network troubleshooting. So as I said, uh, in uh, IC when we use the ICMP, uh, internal control messaging protocol for troubleshooting the network problem. Uh, so how actually identify what, what the problem is related to, right? So it can be uh, the problem is related to the destination network. It can be problem problems related to the physical connectivity, or whatever. So the thing is, uh, is uh, there uh, uh, there is some code to the ICMP protocol generated uh, uh, in Cisco router. So for uh, identifying the problem, like uh, if it, it is related to the uh, if it is for working fine, then uh, we can uh, it's not signed for um, if all is not working. I mean the destination host is unreachable, then there is a dot sign will find over there. So it's a common uh, message we use. So Cisco ping return codes uh, look like this. Like uh, if you think the ping is not uh, if this sign uh, is for the ping uh, when ping is successful, right? Uh, the uh, echo reply is coming from your destination host and the uh, dot sign used for when you are not getting ping response from your destination host. So there could be a, uh, uh, there could be some issue or in remote side, right? So it's called the firewall can be blocked or, um, or every time we are not, no, we will not get the ping response from our destination. If the firewall is blocking, everything is working fine, but firewall can block the uh, ping, right? So in that scenario, we cannot ping our host, right? Another could be, as I said, that can be a router problem. It can be, uh, can be a physical problem. 
so uh, always the, the dotted sign not the network issue it could be at the host level or firewall level issue that uh, firewall is blocking and also it's a uh, when uh, there is no preferable path for the destination then router will uh, give us a you or unreachable message with the ping response when you see a uh, ping response with the u sign then or u code then you will uh, have to understand the problem is related to the route for the destination network and also there is a, a kind of message used for the queue path like uh, you are trying to get response from the destination but there is a huge traffic in in your path then you will find uh, c sign with the ping response and also and and person sign used for um, exit the message received that is that may occur when uh, there is a routing loop in between your uh, source and destination so usually we'll find these two sign or three sign in our network or uh, these two sign as you know we couldn't find in network whether the problem is related to only this um, network layer or um, firewall issue as i said when we'll get the destination uh, host unreachable right so uh, this is like uh, this way you are uh, pinging from host a to host b but uh, the host a to r r1 is working fine but uh, r2 to, to host uh, sorry r1 to host b is physical connectivity is down then r1 e with ping response with unreachable message right so then you have to now uh, just uh, check on r r1 side whether that is related to the physical or its interface level you have manually uh, administratively shut down the interface so in this way you have to troubleshoot the problem and uh, as i said uh, for the trace route command like uh, when you trace routing like uh, this is the cisco ip you are trying to trace out the cisco ip and uh, what you are getting you are getting a uh, 20 hops here that means see a fast uh, your response going to your gateway then uh, after that your um, router or ISP router after that another router another router another router all are the hop or router right so it's passing all the all the way to cisco.com where the host is so they are connected right so when you are getting us uh, uh, like the hand tracing this website and you are getting all this okay but after that it's not working then you have to check the problem is related to the iag or the is related to the circuit level uh, somewhere else on your upside right so in this way when you are tracing the some host or ip you have to understand um, where the problem is right so if you found the uh, when you are tracing the cisco.com you're uh, tracing just passing your gateway not towards the others then you have to check your isp connectivity right or you have to check whether the net is or pet is or uh, configured properly or not right so uh, the, uh, that's the way it is how to use for identifying the problem and uh, other uh, things like debugging command we used for the agency problem for troubleshooting like uh, you have configured the OSDF in your network you have configured the EAJP you have configured the BGP but agency not coming up uh, it can be for OSDF it can be EJP then uh, uh, you have to check the debug command but make sure uh, if you uh, like uh, uh, run the debug command in your router then you will find some information uh, uh, that's uh, where the router is generating the log for this problem so uh, always you will not find 
the problem will be in your console. Just uh, there, uh, there is the way uh, we will uh, mitigate or identify the problem. So debug is another command. We'll check that, and also like if you see here, like uh, the uh, one of the uh, debug command run on R1 debug IPOS web, and here you will find a thing one thing like neighbor. Sorry. Like a neighbor 4.4.4 .4 .4 has a smaller or interface entry. That means that's so in the neighbor she doesn't see is not happening, right? So uh, this kind of problem you will get when you will debug the ISP emergency command, right? So when you see this kind of problem, that means the related to the MTU issue, right? Then you have to fix the uh, MTU issue if it is uh, like uh, one MTU is. 1400 another one is 1500 that means uh, you have to change uh, any of the one like uh, if you want to change uh, to 1400 then you have to change here if you change to this way then you have to change here so uh, in one order you have to change the MTO. so that's the one thing and another like in here if you see as i said the issue is related to the MTU4 as an, another one you see the MTU is larger, right? Where another uh, in R1, you are getting the uh, smaller and in here you're getting that is the larger. So you have to uh, change the MTU size uh, uh, in R1 or R2. And also, it could uh, if you will just debug the ISP uh, OSCAP command, then you'll find lots of information for hello packet or urgency packet. If you just uh, if you just want to uh, check the hello packet of OSCAP, whether you are getting the hello uh, response from your uh, neighbor or not, then or it's related to the parameters, then uh, you can check. Like uh, in R1, uh, the OSCAP hello packet is showing everything fine, right? But in R4, if you see the hello packet, the hello packet uh, parameters for with the R4 is a different mismatch hello parameters. So in like uh, in a date interval or the hold down timer and other things is different with the other, uh, from the uh, R1. Then you have to change in uh, R4 or R1 to resolve the issue. So when you seeing the urgency not happening with the R4 or, or any other router, then you have to check this way. And uh, this is the hello dead interval by default in uh, routers. Like uh, if you uh, configure the IPO escape in broadcast network type broadcast, then hello intervals for this broadcast is a 10 and the dead intervals 40. If it is non broadcast network type, then uh, the hello interval for uh, for the non broadcast network is 30 and the dead interval 120. And for the point to point, it is uh, 10 is the hello and uh, a dead interval is 40. So you have to remember those things, whether you are configuring point to point, broadcast, multi, uh, non broadcast or multi, uh, uh, point to multi point, like uh, you are configuring uh, one side is point to point, another uh, side is broadcast or non broadcast. Like uh, you are configuring the broadcast and also if it is broadcast and non, uh, the hello and dead interval is same, so it will come right. So if you like configure for one is point to point, another is point to multi point, the hidden uh, hello and dead interval are not same, right? So point to multi when you configuring point to multi point, the hello is thirty and dead is twenty. And here, uh, if you configure point to point, the hello is ten and dead is twenty. Then uh, there is a mismatch with the hello and dead interval. Uh, the adjustment will not ha happening with these two routers. So you have to check whether it's related to the hello dead interval or not. There's uh, with the debugging command.
and uh, show IP or SPF interface. We already checked that how uh, whether it's related uh, to the interval or it's related to the, as I said in here, uh, point to multi point. It's uh, when you are point to multi point, the hello data interval is different. And uh, in other side, if it is point to point or not, well, then it's 10 and 40, right? So neighbor or she will purchase the scent with your R1. Another uh, conditional debugging you can use, like the when you are using the for debugging command, then there could be uh, in production lots of packet will be generated in your router. So if you wanna uh, like uh, if you wanna just conditional debug, like uh, one source to another, like like you don't wanna debug all debug uh, command for all the um, neighbors like in your router more than uh, 30 neighbors as a sent already at the same time in the neighborship already built right so when you debug the ip ospa hello command like then it will debug all 30 um, ospa neighbor hello packet will come in your uh, console right so it will difficult uh, it will be difficult for you to understand where um, which packet is for uh, the problematic area right then uh, you, how actually mitigate uh, this issue for this purpose we have to use the conditional debugging conditional debugging means you have to like uh, this is your router one r1 and this is r2 you no, this is the this is point to point IP like 192.168.14.1 is one IP and one is 14.4. Then uh, you will use the source IP is this one destination IP is like 224.0.0.5. Right. So when using this OA, just you are using uh, you have to use the access list in debugging command. Then uh, you will just uh, filtering uh, the debug command for this source to this destination, right? In this way, you can uh, use the conditional debugging in your debug command to, uh, I mean, eliminate the other debug command of your uh, router neighbors. So, uh, when we are troubles, when we are troubleshooting the neighbor or OSP neighbor or relationship, so there could be many problems. Just okay. Now, so the for OSP neighbor agency, there are lots of things we have to check when neighborship agency not happening with your desired routers. Like, so there could be a interface down, there could be the interface run, running with the proper OSP process, there could be a problem with the mismatch timers, there could be a problem with the mismatch area numbers. Like, as we already configured the OSP in a uh, uh, previous webinar, right? So, it could be a different subnet that the interface mismatch authentication aclm due to pick a router so all those things we have to check one by one right so when you are getting uh, one side with configured with the um, authentication and other side is not configured the authentication then you have to configure other side also with the authentication right and also you have to configure a uh, the interface that is come and came up or not like uh, you say up and up or it's just showing uh, down or down right so you have to check one by one we'll check in our topology and you check directly to the console so i just i just recapping uh the pro, uh, pro, I mean, the area where we have to check for neighbor adjacency, not the other things. 
So for the EAJLP neighbors, you are see you have to check uh, these things like uh, interface mismatch all, all the way to uh, you have checked for the OS wave like misconfiguration or uh, key value is more in, uh, most important for the OS wave on also the passive interface. So uh, as you know, the passive interface suppress the sending the hello packet when we configure the interface with the passive interface, it will not forward the hello packet to its neighbors. Like uh, you have four uh, connectivity, you don't wanna send the hello packet or uh, you don't wanna the urgency with this router like R4, then you can uh, configure the uh, yeah, passive interface with this interface. Then uh, the OSB will not forward the hello packet to this router, although the network is configured in the um, in OSB. That means you are writing uh, this network is under the OSB, but uh, you don't uh, don't wanna our neighbor or agency with this router. Then you have to configure this interface as a passive interface. Okay, we just draw it for few minutes to complete the agent. Okay, so uh, that's the all things we have to check when we are checking the neighborship uh, ship with the EAGRP. And also this is for the BGP as we already uh, uh, know about all those things we because uh, we yeah, started we configured the name of uh, yeah, BGP, IBGP and ABGP also there. So also this passwords are TGL hello, most important thing in, BGP, like uh, then this is the TTL value when you are configuring the M BGP, multiple EBGP, then you have to consider the uh, TTL value and also other things, the network connectivity, interface, misconfiguration, PR groups. Uh, actually, this config peer groups I did and discussed. Uh, this peer group group used when you have more than uh, I mean you have lots of uh, IBGP peers, but uh, when you are configuring IBGP peer with full mesh, then one by one you have to configure. Uh, right. So when you configuring that template and you just uh, using these templates for your uh, uh, neighbor group, then uh, this is the easy way. So that's how you have to configure the peer groups in IBGP. So like uh, you have a 30 uh, routers to uh, need to complete the uh, IBGP session of full mesh, then uh, how many, uh, how many uh, IBGP peer need to be configured here, right? So the formula is 10, uh, N into N minus one divided by Two. So if you think the 30 into 30 minus one divided with lots of, uh, I mean, uh, 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 session have to be configured for this, right? So to eliminating all those things, we are just need to configure the peer group and uh, then the, the configuration is quite uh, easier. For
okay before moving into the snmp and others so let's move uh, our diagram i mean in our topology and how we can troubleshoot the one problem so in here uh, sir i just need two or three person to join with me for interactive troubleshooting the network problem as here i have drawn a one topology and we will uh, troubleshoot some problem that's related to the uh, OSPA, PAJRP, and BGP. If someone uh, want to join with me, then they can. Can you please allow those people who want to join? Sir, can you hear me? Uh, yes, Mazur. Okay. So I need uh, two or three participants who can join with me for the troubleshooting purpose, for interactive troubleshooting purpose, because uh, it will help them for uh, how to troubleshoot in, in uh, their topology. So uh, two, three, four will be good for me. No issue. You, if you want, just allow them. Who wanna join with me? Just raise your hand. Okay, sir, please allow his mic and just only one. Any other? If you want to join me for troubleshooting, then it will be helpful for you. So wanna join? No one? Except Ahad. Okay. So Ahad, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So if you see in here right uh, in this topology, like the uh, upside, there is a Uh, in offside, there is a topology with the AS number 2 and the OSPA configured with the area 0. Then all the router is configured with the loopback of his router. Like for the router 10, the loopback interface is 10.10.10.10. .10 and for the router 1, the loopback interface configured with the 11.11.11.11. .11 so in R1, uh, the loopback interface with the R1.1.1.1. So all the router configured with the loopback and the point-to-point. -point. The point-to-point -point IP is configured with like uh, 192.168, then X, Y, and X, or Y. That means uh, this is the router ID. If it is one, then it is one, and it is Y is two, then it, it will be two for one-to-one -one and for R1, it will be one, and for R2, it will be two. So this way the pairing IP configured here. So where our target? Our target is to get like uh, in R5, we have to reach the reachability check from R5 to the R13. That means we have to make sure all the EHRP configured working, uh, I mean, working properly in here and also in S one side, there is no routing uh, protocol configured for the I BGP, but there is a configuration with the BGP. Then there will, um, as yesterday we check that R1 is uh, advertising his loopback interface towards uh, the R2, then we have to check whether R2 is getting the R1 loopback interface that is 1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. And also we have to check the interconnectivity like the R1 to R9 is getting response from one to one or nine to one to one. And all the OSPA we have to check, uh, you are getting from R1, uh, R11 to getting R2, you are getting R11 to R4. So you have to check whether all the OSPA and BGP is working here. You have to check whether all the EZP is working here. You have to check whether your uh, uh, basic 
crowding coefficient into this level coefficient is it working here you got the point then how actually will it start here first we have to check whether the configuration on r1 is working right or not right yes so the, let's let's start from r1 let's see whether we are getting ping response from r9 or not Mouse got is stuck. I am not unable to move in this one. So we have to start from R1, right? Let's yes. start. So this is R1, but you have to check first. Do you have any idea what you have to check first? Yes, first I have to check ping, first uh, the total configuration, show run configuration. Okay. Okay, just before configuring the show run command, you have to check the physical connectivity, right? Like you have a two connectivity here, like uh, R1 to R2, R1 to R3, there is two interface connected, right? Yeah. One is gig zero by one, another one is gig zero. Then you have to check the interface status first, right? So for checking the interface, we can use the show IP interface beep command. So where you will get whether the interface IP is configured properly or not, right? So interface gig zero by zero that is connected to the R9. So the IP is correct and the it's up, right? And also zero by one that is connected to R2. The interface IP is 192.168.12.1. That's correct. And also interface is uh, up. It is okay. And if you check the loopback interface, it's also up. So next step, you have to check whether you are getting ping response from R9. So what will be the IP for in R9? 19.2. 19.9. Right. So you are getting response from R9. And then you have to check whether you are getting the loopback interface IP that is of R9 that is 9.9.9.9. .9 so check whether you are getting or not. So you are not getting ping response from, from the loop. R9 loopback, right? Yes. Okay. So then we have to go to R9, right? Yes. Okay. Then move on to the R9. First, we have to check, first thing first, we have to check the interface things, although you have checked from R1. So interface is nine physical connectivity up, and also you are getting things like loopback interface is up. Yes. So why why you are not getting ping response from nine? Maybe there is no routing. No routing, okay. So let's check on R, R9 show IP route for checking the 
routing table, right? Yes. Okay. So you see there is configuration uh, configured the default route. The next stop address is 192.168.1.1. That is the R1 IP. That's correct. Right? Yes. So default route is configured here statically. So all the traffic will go to R1. So if we check the R1 loopback interface IP with ping, so you are getting ping from R1. That means from R9 to you can go the R1. But from R1 to R9, you are not getting ping response to R9 loopback. Yes, yes. So but that's the issue. So how now where we'll go? R1, in R1. In R1. Okay. In R1. What we'll have to check? Show IP route. Show IP route, right. Show IP route. So which network we have used? Nine which net network? Uh, nine, 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 nine. Nine, nine, nine. So there is two default uh, two route set statically. That is 192.168.19.9. Another one is. So is it okay? By a 19. By no, it will go by the gigawatt zero by zero interface, yes. Gigawatt zero by zero interface, right. But uh, this in here, you, you are getting this is the next stop address, right? Yes, yes, yes. So just check the configuration show run include IP route. So here you see the two routes configured for nine network, right? So first, we will have to remove all those things. No, for removing no IP route oh. nine, and also no this one. Now we are adding another route, IP route for which network? Nine network, right? Yes. Nine dot nine dot nine dot zero, and the subnet pass is two fifty five two fifty five dot. Zero and the next of address is 192.168.19.9. Yes. If you now ping like 9.9.9.9, .9 you are getting ping. Yes. So, uh, so you are a uh, ping response. On, uh, so you, uh, you can easily troubleshooting where the problem is, right? So, in this way, you can troubleshoot the like uh, if you uh, just configure the static route or you just configure the point to point IP or default load, then you can identify why the problem is this way. So, first we have checked the interface level IP where it is configured properly, whether it is the routing is okay or not, whether uh, you are getting ping from one side to another side. Right? Yes. So, in R1 side, R1 to R9 is working fine, right? Yes then move on to the R2. Okay. okay, so let's open the R2. So what we'll have to have in R2 routing table? Do we have any idea? What, what are you expecting in R2 routing table? They're uh, expecting uh... One is routing the OSPF neighbors. OSPF. How many neighbors you will have here? How many? In R2. How many OSPF neighbor will be in R2? How many? Two. We are just figuring uh, figure out the like uh, what could be and wh what is the problem, right? See, so in R2, just think in R2 is connected to R3, that is in OSPF area zero, then you have you will have one OSPF neighbor in R2, right? That's one thing. Mm -hmm. Another thing, R2 is connected to R1 by a BGP. That means there will be a, a one EBGP one. pairs. Yes, yes. And also, if R2 is configured the IBGP with R3, R10, 11, 12, 4, then you will have five IBGP pairs. That's correct? Yes. So uh, you will have this neighborship in R2. 
also in r2 routing table you will have like 4.4.4.3.3.3.10.10.10.11.11 and 12.12.12.12 loopback interfaces ip of the routers like but when I, you but i thought that uh, in r2 only connected network will be uh, will uh, will uh, remain in their routing table only R3 and R3. If you announce all, like uh, you, you configure the OSPF in your network, then you will have all the connected interface and uh, the loopback if you enable the loopback on uh, OSPF, right? So it will be on your IGP. So it's the best practice to configure the loopback interface when you will configure in the IBGP. And uh, this loopback interface will be used for neighbor address, right? Okay. So let's move on to the R2 and check whether we are getting all the neighborship that we are expecting in here. In R2 first configure, so uh, take the interface like, right? Yeah. So IP interface pre. So this in, uh, IP is command for checking the IP and also the interface status. So another command we will can you just show IP interface status? Uh, okay, this command is not working here. Oh, okay, show interface status is the command. Okay, this command is not uh, taking here, but in physical uh, switch, you will get this uh, command also working because uh, it's checking for whether this uh, the interface connectivity or physical memory is okay or which SAP you are using is a pluggable or uh, plug it in or not. So for checking those kind of things, you can use the show interface status command. For checking the show IP interface, for checking the IP of the router, show IP interface grip command. So if we check the gigabit ethernet 0 by 0 is connected to R3, the IP will be 192.168. 2.3.2, 2.3.2, and also 0 by 1 that is connected to yeah. R1, and the IP will be 192.168.12.2, so 12.2, and the loopback interface is 2.2.2, and all the interface status is up and protocol status is up. So it looks fine at the inter, uh, IP level. Now check the OSPF neighborship, show IP OSPF neighbor is the common, right? Yes. So, what will how many neighbor you are expecting here? Only one, right? Yes. So, you are getting only one neighbor that is 3.3.3. .3. So, that's fine here. And also, if you check the show IP BGP summary, how many BGP pair will be here? Uh, one two three four five and six right yes okay so how many bgbp are you are getting one two three four five six right but if you see on right side three four ten the bgp neighborship key uh, is showing up right but eleven twelve is you are getting down so uh, then it could be problem on uh, router 11 it could be on uh, problem in router 12 right yes so we will check it later but uh, before that we'll uh, we'll have to check whether you are getting route from the r1 yes so, so being the router ping, r1 loop no uh, you if you see that in uh, this is the ebgp external bgp right show ip bgp include uh, external okay it's not all summary okay This is the email order, right? So some command may work, some may not work. 
So this is the EBG PPR with the R1. So your neighborship is coming out, but you are not getting the route, right? When you will getting the route, it show, will be shown in here, right? In uh, state and prefixes received. Yeah. This is the prefix and received. So a state is up, but the pref uh, when you see, um, showing the zero, that means the uh, it, uh, neighbor address is established, but you are not getting any route from R1. So when you are not getting R1, then first you have to check whether you have any filter list in your site. So how you will check whether any filter list configured in here? So to checking the issue, show one section router PGP. So this is configuration for R1. So is there any configuration here? No, just simple configuration. We just configured the neighbor ship command. Any other, can you see any other command for R1? No. No. Then there is no issue with the R2. Then we have to go on R1. R1. So if you go back into R1, to see. then what you have to check whether you are advertising the R uh, loopback interface on R1 or not, right? Yeah. So show run section router PGP. So you can, um, some of us all, uh, we, we can always use a show run command, right? Yes. So check all the configuration, but there is a lots of configuration. So you have to just eliminate other things so what you have required you just uh, included all these command that used in your configuration right so for omitting other things we are using the section command show run section and what we are going to filter we are going to filter the vg configuration that's why section router pgp we just need to see the bgp command here so if you just check router bgp neighbor okay and the network command is configured with the two statement right yes so what will be the exact command so okay first remove the first one uh okay router bgp one okay before checking that how can we check whether we are sending the prefixes to the r to or not how will check whether the r1 is advertising the bgp prefixes or not so for checking the bgp prefixes show ip bgp neighbor 192.168.12.2 is the neighborship ip then it's advertised out which routes you are advertising to your neighbors so if you see you are not advertising any route to R2, okay? But you got it? Hello? Okay, so this is actually the uh, command for checking whether uh, the, you are sending the prefixes to your neighbors or not. But, so, If you want to remove the network statement here, like router BGP, just check. Show IP BGP summary. The neighbor, this is not up yet. It's up. So let's see whether we are sending any routes. Still, we are not sending any routes here, right? So why why we are not sending any routes here? We already advertised route here. Show run section router BGP. 
so if you see the network we already advertising and neighborship already happen why not is advertising so this is the most important thing you have to check when you are advertising something so when you advertising something like a network is 1.1.1.0 and mask is 255 255 255 and 255 you have to exact match in your route table if you don't find anything like network is 1.1.0 and mask is 255 255 255 255 the bgb will not advertise the route to his neighbors now check whether you are getting uh, have the same network with the same mask in your routing table so for checking the routing table show ip route is the command and if you want to just filter the one network like 1.1.1.0 so you'll start getting this one. So what you are getting here, like for one network, you are getting for one network is one and it's 32. But you are getting only one, that network you're showing is one, right? So first the IP interface, IP in your loopback, Shora interface loopback, you see it's configured with the 32. When you are configuring 32, that means this is your network, this is your broadcast, like, and this is your host, right? But you configured with the mask is network is zero. That's why you are of uh, PGP neighbors not sending any thing of, uh, in your PGP neighbors. So what we can do, we can change the subnet mask here, or also you can change the network mask here. So let's uh, let's first change the mask here. Like IP address is 1.1.0 and submit pass is 255. Oops. Interface group deck zero. And the IP address is 1.1.1 and the subnet pass is 255 255.0. And also you have to change the subnet pass in BGP. So show run section router router BGP and so configure the BGP like router BGP one and first we have to remove this one. And need to configure the exact match like 1.1.1.0 and the mask is 255 to 55 to 55.0 and when you configure something after neighbor shower just then you have to clear the bgp show clear ip bgp we are just need to clear the outside advertisement so out now, if you see the advertisement route here, you will find you are advertising 1.1.0/24 network to your neighbors. So, and also if you see the show IP route command, this is exact match, right? You are sent configured and it's on your routing table. So if you see on R2, now you'll find the route. Rad, are you with me? Okay. So uh, this way we can troubleshoot the BGP advertisement uh, problem, whether it is uh, advertising or uh, or not now if we uh, before checking the ospf things uh, i just moving into the right side that is related to the eajrp first so first see on r5 okay i just closing this session for the time being
or oh, sir, uh, how much time in my hand? Okay, how much time you need? <laughs> it's uh, I don't know exactly how much because uh, uh, we I have configured lots of things over there, so I have to describe one by one. Okay, you can continue. Okay. okay. So uh, if we go into R5, uh, what actually we're expecting from R5, if we just summarize those things, then it will help us to identify the problem, right? So here, if you see uh, the SP and EJP3 is configured for this network and you will have the two uh, in R5, you will have two EJLP neighborship and also you'll have one PG, EBGP neighborship. So we didn't configure any IBGP over here. And what we will have here or, or what we are expecting from R5, we'll have to have the R7 loopback, R6 loopback, R13 loopback and R8 loopback. That means R5 should reach, a, R5 can reach anywhere of this network. So first thing first, we have to check the interface IP or whether IP is configured is properly or not. So show IP interface flip is the command. Let's check one by one, kick zero by zero that is connected to R4. The IP would be 192.168.54.5. That is 50, oh sorry, 45.5, that is okay. Because the lower one will, the first and uh, the gig zero by one, uh, that is 57 and 57.5 is okay. And zero by two, that is 58, that is okay. And all the interface is showing up and protocol is up. Also the loopback interface is up. So we are getting all the interface and IP config configuration is okay. Oops. Okay, so now what we'll check, we'll check first the EAJLP neighborship, show IP EAJLP neighbor. So what we are getting here, you are getting two neighbor ship like a 58.81 another one is 57.0 that means five, uh, seven percent so neighbor EJP neighborship is okay then also you will have the one EBGP neighborship like show IP PGP summary for taking so you are also getting EBGP neighbor or as see here so uh, the neighborship with the okay uh, like uh, from the uh, to the outside and also the internal side. So now you have to check whether you are getting all the routes from R5 or um, uh, I mean R7, R7, R8, R6, R13. So to checking those routes show IP route or show IP AGP, IP route EAJLP. Show IP route EAJLP for checking the EAJLP route. So you'll find all the routes here. So what you are getting here, you are getting only seven and eight. That means you are getting only seven and eight and also it's connected interface IP. But you are not getting any loopback of R6 and R30. So that's the one issue. That means you are not getting uh, like uh, R6 and R13 uh, loopback interface. So we have to check over there. Before that, we are uh, going over there. We will check whether we are getting R7, R8 correctly or not. So ping R7 loop back. So you are getting you are getting here and also the 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. So it's okay from our side. So the problem is we are not getting the 6 and 13 loop back interface, right? There's the issuing in R5. So 
now check whether uh, so neighborship with the r5 r6 is uh, r8 is okay so there is no issue with the neighborship urgency in r5 there could be a problem with the r7 r8 or r6 r13 right so if we want to check first the r6 is connected to all of the all those uh, three uh, all of three routers then we will first check the r6 side right so now go to the r6 first thing first we have to check the interface ip show ip interface script check whether your uh, interface ip is configured properly or not first so you're just checking the one by one interface geek zero by zero is connected to r7 that is 67 or 6 it's okay as uh, 68 uh, i mean uh, a gig, uh, gig zero by one is connected to eight and that is 68 or six it's okay and uh, zero by two that is connected to r13 and 136 or six is configured for here so you'll have to check whether this subnet mask is configured the same or not so we just taking note here So the R3 should be on the same subnet, right? And also the 6.6 .6 is configured. Yeah. So first we are we'll going to the, okay. Well, first we'll check the point to point IP of 13, like R13 is supposed to be the response, right? But we are not getting this response. Then we have to check R3 side also. So if you found all the interface configuration fine, but you are not getting ping, then you have to check over the other R router. So if you check on gig zero by zero that is connected to the R7, then IP will be the seven. So you are getting ping from R7. That is point to point is looks good. And also if you check the ping from our side also okay that means uh, in here if you for of the um, from six router you are getting ping from the point to point ip of r7 also for getting ping from the point to point of r8 but you are not getting ping from r card in here so first we are uh, we are uh, Try to resolve the R thin connectivity issue. So move on to the R13. Show IP interface beep. A command. So if you see here earlier, okay, earlier connect uh, the uh, network was 36 but your interface is configured with r37 so there is one thing another one is the interface is administratively shut down so what you will have to do here first you have to configure the interface ip first interface geek 0 by 2 and the ip no IP address for removing the IP address. Also, IP address command for adding the IP address. What will be the IP address? 136.6.13 uh, is the IP. And subnet pass is 255.255.255.0. And for up the interface, no shutdown is the command. So, now, if you check the show IP interface IP here. So now interface is come, came up and also the loopback interface is came up. So if you check the point to point IP here, like ping of point to point IP of six router is six. Now you are getting ping response from six, also vice versa. You will get the ping response from R6 before going to our there I just 
and the slide show here. Okay. Now, R6. Okay. So, in R6, you will also got response from R13 now. So, you are now getting response. So, physical connectivity is okay now. Now, check the neighbor adjacency. Show IP, AJP neighbor. But you are not getting any neighbor urgency then what could be the problem so that's the thing we have to identify first uh, where is the problem so first thing first for what we have to check we have to check show ip eajlp show ip eajlp interfaces right so which interface have configured for eajp we are seeing here the interface gig 0 by 0 0 by 1 0 by 2 all are under the eajp process that means we have configured that is under what will be the process what is the process id the process id is 3 so the eajp process id is the 3 here so now we have to check the process id on r13 show ip eajrp interfaces what is the process id here so if you see the process id here the process id is 2 that means there is a process id mismatch in between r6 and r13 that that's why the neighbor uh, neighborship urgency not happening with our team but as I, we said what will be the process id for the ajrp it will be the three then you have to change on where on r13 right so let's check the configuration on r13 set show run section router eigrp So then you have to first remove the EAJRP process here. No router EAJRP process two. And also you have to configure the EAJRP process router three. And the network is 192.168.36.6 is okay. And also the 30. Okay, now if you see on R6 or R13, show IP AJP neighbor, neighbor, you are not getting any neighbor still, but you are getting one message here. See, there is a one mismatch in k value in your neighbor that is 136.6 so how we'll check that so if you check the interface level like uh, show ip protocol first check here so this is the default 103 is configured for the k value for the ejc here in R13. So it's a default. One and three is on, others is zero. Now check on R6 site. Show IP protocol. Share. So now if you check on R6 site, you will have C. There is mismatch with the k value it's configured on the uh, metric of the k value is on so what we will can do we can remove the k value from here so what is the configuration here show run section router eigrp so here if, uh, if you see the eajp configuration you will find the eajp metric configuration here so we have to just remove this one so okay router agent fit three 
and no metric wires. If you now see the EIJP matrix show IP protocol, see now the K value is the same as the R13. So in R6, if you see the divergence now show IP EIJP neighbor. Okay, first we check here. Show IP EIJP neighbor. Okay, now you are getting the neighbor urgency is came up. That means the issue with the K value. First, what we will uh, what we are uh, resolve the issue with the physical connectivity and the interface IP. Then we, we got the issue with the K value of the remote side. So now the neighbor urgency is happen with the R6. So now check the route show IP EIGLP show IP route EIGLP so now you are getting the five six seven eight what is that five six seven eight and also the 13 where is the 13 is oh no you are not getting the 13 uh, by EJP, but it's a local route. So now check on the R6. So I EJP neighbor, EJP neighbor. Sorry, it's a typo. Now, checking on, okay. so there is another issue with the R8. If you see on R6, like uh, RC, they have to have the three neighbor chip, right? one with the R. If we are on R6, then we have to have the three neighbor agency on EAJ. So we are getting only two, one with the 67.7, 67.7 .7 is the R7, and the 136 is 13 is the 13, but we are not, the R6 not, uh, Established neighbor urgency with R8. So there could be another issue in R6 or R8. So the R13 issue is resolved. Now we have to check on R6 side again. Okay, so here in R6, now check the configuration again, show run. Show run section router EIGRP. So it's look uh, 67.6, the age or six, one thirty six or six. So, passive loopback interface is used for not sending the loopback to loopback interface. Is okay. So, in R six side, it looks good. Now, we have to check on R eight side. R eight side. Now move on to the R eight. So first thing first, we have to check the interface IP. So interface that is connected to the R6 is gig zero by one, gig zero by one. So it will be the 68.8, 68 is up and the loopback is all around. And if we check the show one, Okay, first check the show neighbor ship, show IP, AGLP neighbor. It's supposed to be two, but we are getting one that is connected to our file. That means other side is okay. Now check the configuration on our show run section router EIGLP. Okay, 
it looks good in R8 also. Then where is the problem actually? Okay. So then you have to check whether there is any authentication or those things configured over here or not. So you can debug those like the EAJP packets in, in this interface. It could be the uh, cable or it could be another, anything, right? So let's debug those hello packet here. Okay, before that uh, we have, uh, we can check whether uh, the interface is configured with the authentication or not. So show IP, EAJRP, uh, interface, interface is big zero by one. Okay. And the okay. The detail we are getting the hello is okay. Authentication is not set here, so it looks good from big zero by one at R8. So no authentication is set here. If you see here, authentication mode is not set, and for this authentication is mode not set here. So if you check the show IP protocol here, so cable also looks good. Router ID okay, and the other thing the routing information okay. Right now we can check the R6 side. Show IP AJP interface detail. So big zero y one we have to check. Okay. So if you check on big zero y one, what we are getting here? If you see the authentication mode type, there is an authentication like AJP authentication configured on interface level here. So in one side you configured the edge around authentication but other side you are not configured anything on interface level here like there is no authentication for gig zero by one more said that's why the neighbor is not coming up then what you can do you can do authentic uh, configured authentication at our uh, R8 side or you can remove the authentication type on r6 interface okay okay we can uh, for the timing we just remove the authentication yes so show run sec interface gig zero by one for checking the interface level command and you see the interface authentication 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 configured in here so what we'll do we'll remove the authentication from here so IP EAJ authentication mode no and also IP authentication EAJRP no. So now if you see the EAJRP neighborship show IP EAJRP neighborship now we'll see that Two neighbor, three neighbor. One is R13, one is eight, one is seven. That is the neighbor is so okay right now. So what you'll have right now in R6, you will have four low back. I mean R5, R7, R8, R13 low back in R6. Let's check on R6. All right, what? Okay, first check on R6. Show IP route EAJRP. So you are getting five, you are getting seven, you are getting eight, you are getting, looks good. That means you are getting all the routes from your EAJR. And if you go back into the R5 and check the routing table here, show IP route EAJRP for checking the EAJRP route, you are getting six, you are getting seven, you are getting eight, you are getting 13. That means you are getting all the 
the facility. Now you can ping the 13 dot like 13 dot 13 dot 13 dot 13. See now it's working. So now all of our EJLP is working properly in our in this network. So this way you can troubleshoot the EJLP uh, problem in your network. So first, what you have to do, you have to check the physical connectivity, you have to uh, you have to check the interface IP, you have to check the K values, you have to check the uh, autonomous system number, you have to check the authentication type. So one by one, you have to check, and this way you can troubleshoot the EJLP problem in your network. Make sense, guys? Lots of question. Okay. Sir, can you please open the Shira Guru Islam mic? Hello. And as well. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, when will you finish your lecture? Uh, after completing the lecture, we can we'll share the assessment link. Okay, I got it. Okay, uh, I'll finish in within short time. Just uh, you, sir, can you please open the Shira Guru Islam mic? And also Mahmudullah Khan Mai. Shiradul Islam and Mahmudullah Khan. Nazul? Yes, sir. Uh, I open the floor for Shirazul Islam. Shirazul Islam, can you hear us? Shirazul Islam. Okay. Mahmudul Hassan. Okay. I mean, I think they are gone. Okay. Okay, let me um, back into my presentation and i'm uh, finishing short time so in this way you have you can troubleshoot your problem in your topology in your network whether it is related to the osk whether it is related to the ehrp whether it is related to the other routing protocol right so that's the procedure and another thing for uh, snmp protocol for management purpose like uh, we can use like monitoring and when uh, like you have a 50 more router then you have to monitor all the router, whether it's got down or not, right? So how you will monitor all uh, these routers and the link interface status? So SNMP is the protocol. There is simple network management protocol we used for monitoring the links, monitor the device, monitor the power failure and other things. So SNMP we can use and we can use a, a monitoring tool to uh, monitor uh, those routers using the SNMP protocol. And for network side also, you have to manage the slog in our routers for managing or collecting the situation. Like uh, yeah, when you are getting any alert on your devices, is it uh, a critical or is it the errors or warning notification, whatever it is, you have to log on the, um, you have to uh, save or you have to store all the logs in your system servers so that uh, 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 you will find a yes, find you find any problem like a, you got one of your router is got down but you are uh, suddenly but how you will understand where the problem is then you have to go your sysbox server then you will find whether it is related to the power or whether it is related to the other sim portion that's why Cisco is important in our network to identify whether the problem is critical or it was warning other things. That's all from my side. If you have any question, so you can raise your hand so we can wrap up our presentation. Okay, I, uh, thank you, Nozul. I think you can uh, see the uh, question in question answer box, two questions basically. I already opened the floor for them, but they didn't respond. Okay, but I. Uh, how to troubleshoot an FTA, FTP server problem? But so I have to understand why. Specific what problem. problem first, okay, right? Shirazul Islam, can you hear me? 
So yeah. if it is uh, okay, sir, just uh, for explaining the issue, uh, if it's related to the connectivity, physical connectivity, right? So then we have to check the first uh, whether uh, the um, connectivity is a physical connectivity, okay? Then the IP address configured properly on FTP server. After that, we have to check whether FTP server is configured on that server is okay or not, right? And also you have to check the authentication. If we configure the authentication of TV server, then we have to check the that side. So one by one, we have to oh, check what about shooting the FTP server. And Mahmoud said there is a high, if you have a higher DB loss in your fiber link, can you get the proper speed? So uh, it's depend how, uh, how uh, much DB loss you are getting right now. So it may vary, but some of the links not coming off with the two DB loss, but uh, we can browse the internet uh, with a 20 DB loss. So it may vary where um, how, what is the interface uh, link is paid and what you are expecting. But uh, yeah, but it's, uh, as I, um, I can say it's related to the DB loss. If you are not getting proper speed, it may be on uh, the fiber DB loss. Hope you will uh, got the answer. Is there any other question? Is there, do you have any other question? I think maybe I all are getting all my all of my points. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have any question. Okay, sir. Do you have any uh, other question? I think in the question session is over. And so um, we can conclude our all over the webinar courses. Am I right? Uh, yes. yes, yes. We have uh, completed our all session. Uh, uh, thank you, Nojul Islam. This is a long journey. Uh, this project basically covered a lots of events. Uh, initially, uh, we complete. We have completed ten uh, sem physical seminars. After that, uh, we, we have started ten consecutive uh, webinar courses. This is used mammoth task. Uh, in these webinar courses, we have found that uh, huge foreign participants, especially Afghanistan, Pakistan, Thailand, Malaysia, Philippines, uh, Bhutan, uh, Nepal. Uh, Cambodia, Laos. Uh, I think uh, these countries participants uh, enjoy this uh, webinar courses. Hopefully, all participants, especially female and uh, uh, students, uh, get huge knowledge from starting to this end course. Uh, basically, our target uh, was to start from beginning and. Uh, beginning regarding this network issues and uh, gradually we nursing the participants from uh, beginning to advanced level hopefully all participants uh, will uh, receive the video lectures after the webinar courses uh, no matter all courses are all course materials are uploaded uh, were uploaded in our website also youtube video link if in future, um, the interested participants will gather uh, knowledge regarding this uh, webinar courses. Uh, especially, I would like to thank all of my colleague, especially uh, Professor Samsu Jaman sir, the Honorable Coordinator of this webinar courses, uh, MD Faisal Ahmed, uh, Faisal Hassan, uh, Mahmoud Hassan Faisal, our program officer, Orpita uh, Holadar, our Honorable colleague, and also uh, collaborating participant of this uh, safe projects, uh, MD Mahur Rahman, uh, also a colleague and uh, one of the uh, team member of these projects. Uh, I grateful to all of my colleagues, collaborating participants, um, uh, COPI, uh, MD Jahidul Islam, uh, I thanks all of you. Uh, and uh, lastly, I grateful to all of our honorable instructor. Without their cordial cooperation, these webinar courses uh, will not 
uh, uh, visible to the participants regarding uh, our project perspective. Thank you. Uh, now, I would like to request uh, MD Samsud Jaman sir, Honorable Coordinator, uh, to deliver some hello speech and uh, close the uh, webinar course session. Sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chinmay, uh, uh, project leader of this uh, SAFE project. And thanks all of you uh, who have uh, participants who have already joined long 10 uh, webinar course. I think uh, you have get some, you have uh, received some output or you, can, you uh, get some knowledge from this webinar course or you can uh, see our video, video lecture and slide. Uh, you can study it and also thanks uh, the all of uh, instructor who are uh, related to this course, 10 webinar course, uh, uh, Mahabubur Rahman, then uh, Urpita Haoladar, then uh, uh, Sora Bhasan sir from Buet, uh, Mehdi Hastan and uh, lastly Nuzul Islam. And thanks, uh, also thanks the uh, Faisal and others panel member. Actually, uh, it's uh, just initiative. So our target is to uh, uh, just uh, give you some information related to networking. If you are interested, you need to uh, explore it and also uh, to, uh, to, uh, to get uh, to increase your skill in this networking area so that uh, you can uh, get a job or you can uh, 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 take from any output from this course. So thanks to all of you. I think uh, this, uh, this is, my, this is uh, from my part. Uh, in the meantime, I have already shared the assessment link. Uh, you can uh, submit this assessment and also, and also- and There might have some issue, some participant asking for access permission. Is actually, there no need the assessment, per uh, assessment per permission. I think you need to try the last link. No need to previous link, try the last link. Already they have, uh, someone has already by, uh, raised the issue and I have already solved the issue. Okay. okay. Especially I think, would like to thank, I would like to thank all of my uh, foreign participants uh, because uh, due to time different uh, situation, uh, especially some participants uh, uh, may join in uh, evening, uh, and uh, afternoon, night, whatever. Uh, thank you. Thank you, all of you. Thanks to all of you uh, for your cordial participation. Uh, I think hopefully all of you will uh, gather more knowledge after uh, completing this webinar session and visit this uh, video link for any issues. You may ask any questions in our um, safe network. Uh, we will try our level best to solve the uh, add his questions from your side. Uh, our honorable instructor also cooperate uh, to all of you uh, for solving the uh, upcoming issues. Uh, another another point uh, uh, in this project uh, in this project we have some physical event. I am really sorry to announce this this event. These events will be arranged only for Bangladeshi female participants. Basically, uh, Asia Connect and European Union finance are uh, to enhance the capacity only for female uh, regarding this project issue. For this region, I, uh, I express my cordial soreness uh, to all of the uh, other participants, uh, especially the foreign participants, uh, to uh, deny uh, the physical involvement you may in, uh, enjoy the upcoming uh, physical event virtually. Uh, all male participants also will enjoy the uh, physical events virtually. Only uh, we ex accept the female participants who uh, will take part in this webinar courses or seminar. Uh, the these participants will prefer than others. Uh, so I think all of the female participants uh, will cordially uh, in feel interest in this. Uh, upcoming physical events. Thank you. Orpita. Hello. 
Urpita, not yet joined. I, I know you. I think you can leave now. Uh, thank okay. you for your help. Oh, no issue, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for joining us. And um, if you have any question, uh, then you can uh, send me a message on LinkedIn. It's already on my presentation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Najul. You, sir. Okay, sir. Bye. Thank you. Joseph. I'm now we've been a close for the body. Sir, for the check. Hello.